Uh, we are incredibly lucky and delighted to have two of the best and most well-known uh, restaurateurs, chefs, proprietors uh, in San Francisco in the Bay Area, Chef Hirosone and Chef Lisa Domani. Uh, good friends of mine, but the people who put Napa on the map with food many years ago with their restaurant Terra, and then they opened Ame uh, in the city. Um, and then there's something they may reveal later about another restaurant. Uh, but those two are perennial Michelin star restaurants. Uh, in 2003, you were um, named James Beard Best Chef. Yes, Best Chef California. Best Chef California. And so um, very early on, Terra was the place I went to for astonishingly beautiful food that was so fresh and so local. Um, I'll let them talk about their romance later, but they, they met us at Spago in, in Los Angeles, and so it, it was a trans-Pacific romance and all sorts of things, right? A language issue. A language issue. Still. 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 <laughs> Before it really was one, now it's because we're married. <laughs> Intent, uh, that gets more intense, but yeah. I, I, okay, yeah, I will leave that. Yeah, to go there. <laughs> <laughs> so um, they have, of course, their beautiful cookbook, Terra, uh, but this new book is a departure. It's uh, the official title, A Visual Guide to Sushi Making at Home. It's a really and it, I think name. it comes from very deep within them. It's um, been described as autobiographical. And I think it, it is what they love to do and what they love together and probably love to eat. And the book is incredibly accessible for the American home cook. And so although I don't think any of the restaurants will officially have sushi on the menu, we are especially lucky that they are telling us how to do it and do it perfectly. So welcome, welcome to Thank Google, both you. of you. Thank and you. you're going to do a couple of things, mix and match, from the book, yes. so I'm going to um, leave it to you. Okay. Tell us what you're going to do. Good afternoon. Okay, first I'm going to explain something because the first question when we came in is um, Olivia asked us would we like chef's jackets and usually when we do cooking classes we do wear chef's jackets but this is sushi from home. We do not wear them at home. <laughs> so we thought for this we should be just like we would be when we're actually making it. And yes, he usually leaves wherever I am and goes someplace else. <laughs> so um, that's why we don't look like we usually do when we do this. You can talk now. OK. So we have a limited time. And uh, uh, first, I, we're going to start with uh, making sushi rice, basically using Japanese rice. Uh, there's an instruction in our book, uh, how to wash and how to cook. So steaming hot Japanese rice here. And we're going to put it in the... Okay, at home, we don't have one of these. I've never seen one. You don't have to So use. don't try to find that. Yeah. It looks like what you put your um, personal things in the laundry with. <laughs> yeah. And this special vaso called hangiri in Japanese, no, no, hot, hot. Uh, basically cutting rice, means cut rice. Does and it say fan? No, it said Google. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not kawaii. Yeah. So this is a sushi zu, also in the book, how to make. Basically vinegar, Japanese vinegar, rice vinegar, sugar, and uh, kelp. Boil it together, and the salt, and the strain of kelp. Uh, there's some remaining in here, but uh, it's good for you. <laughs> So it, just uh, it adds texture. You have to be hot rice. Is that a special fan people have to have? <laughs> you have to go make this fan. You don't have to have it say Google. It can say anything yeah. you'd like. So basically, we don't want to smash rice. We're going to cut rice and make a flaky kind of. First, kind smash of look like a rice. smashing, but the touching rice. <laughs> and, and why is it important to have um, a chef fan it for you while you're um, it's, uh, cutting. Uh, it makes you it can see special. the <laughs> evaporation here. If you don't make a, a more uh, evaporation happening, it's a sushi rice can be wet. Yeah. Okay. So you want to kind of evaporate excess It'll water, make it moisture from uh, rice. 
also this special vessel, it's wood, so it dissolves the old steam too. So that's Absorbs. really help. Absorb, yeah. So at home, of course, we actually had we had one of these. He lost it, um, but we don't usually. We don't really. He's still looking. We don't really know. We don't Thank use you. this. Thank you, please. Thank you, please. I'm not doing my job. Um, I would put the little one. Okay. Um, so we just use a, a, a wide bowl and do this. And you know that thing, this thing. Because when you do this by yourself, that's what this feels like. Because you're trying to cut the rice and fan it with the other hand, mm -hmm. and. It, Sometimes you just have to stop because you can't chew bubble gum and walk. You can't? Not like the, and do the, it's like the same problem. Okay. So as you see, it's very. You can see the individual rice grains. It's not kind of cramp. That's what we want, and we want to fan until almost like a, a body temperature. So you keep doing that. <laughs> let's taste. Yeah, let's. Mm -hmm. He's not going to give me a taste. Chefs, what temperature are you trying to take this to? So body, your body temperature, okay. basically. Mm -hmm. All right. Pretty good. So can you do keep doing this? <laughs> yeah, because I can walk. It gets expensive do. to get her to do that. Mm -hmm. No, it's going to cost. Well, you, you can use a fan, you know, electric fan. That's yeah. most restaurants use it, just blowing. Okay. Keep blowing. We don't have one of those. Mm -hmm. We have me. Then after you made a sushi rice, you want to keep in the vessel, something like this, or home, you can keep kind of cloth, napkin, and put the rice here, and keep, uh, try to keep it warm, like a body temperature. That's the best at, in a, that temperature. You can taste rice really well with that temperature. So you, are, you can keep it warm water, and put the small bowl, and put the lid, and then you keep rice that way. And if the rice getting cold, change water to warmer, so that you can maintain the temperature. Can I get some in here? So just uh, let's see, it's cool off enough, and keep in here. How large? How large a batch would you make at home, chefs? Home, we cook maybe three cups three rice. Three cups, I think. We do be I, like I can't remember 20. exactly what the recipe says, but it's plenty. And you don't need to make all the rice you cook into sushi rice, so you could use it. Can, am I done? Yes, and uh, <laughs> Chef Jerome can help. Yeah. Okay. Let me get this. Next, I'm going to show you uh, using tuna and, you can and make a three hand. different uh, sushi. Actually, two different sushi and one sashimi. So let's get the tuna over here. So one of the things in the book that you'll notice is more than a third of it is designated to how to break down fish. Um, we spent a lot of time, we argued more than any two people are supposed to. Because if he used turn the fish 180 degrees and then 45 degrees to this and put the tail on your head, I was going to hurt him. Um, because Obviously, this isn't what you're going to buy at a fish store, but eventually he's going to cut it to a piece that you can buy. Now what? And so it was important with every fish that we show mm -hmm. how you actually clean an octopus, prepare a squid, do a scallop, do a whole side of a tuna, do a sea bass, everything, so that you could do it at home. We realize not everyone's going to, but it's something that at least helps you understand when you're going to slice the fish what you're looking for. Because we can, you can buy good fillets of things at, at um, markets. The hard one is the, um, the shape that you want the tuna from. That you actually have to go to a Japanese market or do it yourself. So this is almost like a quarter of tuna. Uh, tail powder is missing. This side have a head. And this right here is berry. And uh, another <laughs> berry. <laughs> another loin come here. So basically, almost quarter of the fish. And uh, you see at the sushi bar, they call toro, or chu toro. Usually come from this area. As you see, color is very different. And this is almost red, and this is pale. I don't think they can see it. Yeah. You can see the color difference? All yeah. the way down there. And uh, well, big eye tuna has more fat. Of course, bluefin has more fat here. They, that's a real toro. This is a yellow fin. And so it doesn't have a very much fat. Yeah. 
So I know you don't get this kind of fish at the home, but uh, <laughs> basically, let's see. I'm going to break down this. Well, you can get this quality. Yeah. You can't, you don't. And buy. it's a nice indication is a take a look at this dark part of me. It's a we call bloodline. And uh, usually, if fish get old, it's really become black. That's too old. You got the nice one here. It's almost uh, dark pink. Inside Chef, does here. the uh, blood in the bloodline actually diffuse into the flesh if it's yes, too old? Yes, it does if you keep it too long. But the, you can see this nice dark red. That's a good sign of good, nice fresh fish. So I'm going to take, uh, let's see. Sushi Chef usually keep a, a section of tuna called saku. That's a section of kind of loin ready to slice. So usually lengths about this. Some chef use a finger to measure the size. Some chef use uh, some kind of banks, but uh, I usually cut the almost, uh, how do you say, how many inches is that? Six. Six. Six inches. And you're also not using a long knife. You're using a heavier knife. Yeah, because I had to important. cut through the skin. Mm -hmm. And they usually come off with uh, some uh, scales. scales, so I wipe off. You can see if you go to Tsukiji Market in Tokyo, they use knife about length about like this long, almost like a samurai sword. And uh, let's see, I'm gonna give this one to Jer Chef Jerome, so you can use that. And this one too. So after this. So we're still not to the size that you, can you see would buy at the grocery store yet. Some nice fatty area and a dark red area. Very lean meat here. And a lot of people prefer this area because more flavor and the fat. So I'm going to trim black line, dark black brown spot first. So this is something you would do really slowly, like really watch where you're cutting because you don't want to gouge into good, you know, the part of the meat that you want. And you can always go back and trim just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Like he's going to have to go back and get some of this. Yeah. So don't think you have to get it all in the first go. Then you will s you see a, a big sinew here, so I go knife from here to bottom, touch the skin, and go. Then you get the almost skin-free loin here. Then this side, again, just slide knife slowly. Is that side for me, chef? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, I left some meat. This is good for chopping too right here. Very flavorful meat. Chop and make a hand roll. And if you don't have that skill, you could use a spoon and scrape it. Mm -hmm. which this is part we'll you can here. eat too, but... Uh, that would be a whole other class. <laughs> whole other class. He's very proud of himself. He made tuna bloodline blood sausage the other yeah, day. Yeah, the other day I did. Yeah. And he... Oh. Yeah, and you use the tuna fat to make the little dots in it. Okay, so after you clean the tuna, you want to change cutting board to skin or scale-free zone. So can I get the, okay, great. Okay, now we're switching. Switching. So I'm going to get the saku, the ready to Okay, slice. hold, hold, hold. You're not explain you need to explain like uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> remember like how you decide where to cut uh -huh. it so oh that yeah they in, know? The, in the book yeah so that they, <laughs> this is a class uh, we made a little piece of paper like this size so how many portion you can get from loin you can take a look attach the you know a little piece of piece of paper but uh, you get idea so what I try to do is uh, Basically, try to get something like this. So after this, you, you see this one in a sushi bar in a showcase. That's what you see, okay? 
So, so this is a technique to chef. Because each time tuna is different size, different different shape. But you have to get the always almost same size saku I'm talking about. So how many if many experience give you a best way to get even smaller? Now, the other thing that um, we tried to explain in writing, which was hard, is that you don't buy a chunk that big. You're going to buy a piece that's maybe an inch to two inches mm -hmm. in size because you're doing this at home. This, you can see, is a lot of tuna. I mean, yes, we can probably eat that, but you might want to have something more than just tuna. So you would buy a smaller piece. You may not be able to do it standing upright like he did it. You might need to lay it on its side. But the cutting process is the same. So if you think about how he cut down from the bottom, if it's laying down, you cut across the bottom so that you can get these same pieces. So this one, uh, as you see, there's a lot of sinew. And uh, you can test it first. You can eat without treating anything or you have to scrape off meat from sinew. This is pretty tender, so I go ahead to make another sack from this. So, you can get another portion from there. If it, you taste it, if it's too sinewy, you're gonna scrape off with the spoon. So, technique will be... Is that my job? Yeah. Lisa can show you. Get your little, see? Try not to put, it's still there. So taking a spoon and the gently scrape off meat. You're going just between the sinew. Mm -hmm. This is like a sous chef's job. Yeah. Chef does. <laughs> <laughs> chef has to wash yeah, the dishes chef. though. Well, why don't you do this? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was mean. <laughs> so actually, sushi konoso prefer this part of meat because it's a very flavorful meat. Just looks a little ugly. It doesn't look ugly once no? you put chopped green onion and stuff in it. Let me wash my hand. I also like it because it's kind of idiot proof. Thank you. So um, how often are you making sushi at home for yourselves? Before we made uh, this book, it's almost every week we made yeah. sushi. <laughs> and lately he's been getting beautiful tunas, a half a tuna de terra. And so somehow just a little bit of the belly comes home. Yeah. It's the parts like this, not, the, <laughs> not those, but it's OK. So do people walk into terra and say, would you please, please, please make me some sushi? They don't because, not, well, they might. No, they don't. We don't have rice. So we only do sashimi and crudo and that sort of thing. We do now do, almost from any fish we have that we can do it, we um, roast the heads. And we're really surprised at how many people, like the tuna head, will do a half a tuna head. It, of course, comes out this big on a plate. And there's kind of a few places, there's chunks of meat. But people are really into them. It's so cool. Or. Um, You've done yellowtail, you've done hamachi, um, salmon. It's really nice. It's good to see that people aren't afraid to get, do you want this now or something? No, 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 no. You no. look very worried. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the uh, dish called tataki. It's a huge sheep yamata. Basically seared. Okay. Sashimi preparation, but it's seared outside. So. You can do in a saute pan with a little oil, high temperature, cook quickly seared, or you can use a torch. Torch, if you have it in the house. Or if not, go garage. buy one. They're good for everything. Traditionally, uh, Japanese people use uh, bonito, but the tuna. You can use this technique too. And you've noticed how tataki has entered into the um, American 
cooking terminology. We tataki New York steak, we tataki fish. I think they've tataki um, vegetables. I don't really know what that means, but I've seen it. <laughs> um, it's now become common terminology. Now, when we were writing the book, there's always a recipe that we have a lot of arguments about, and this was one of them, because Hiro is truly a purist, and he wants to teach things from the very basic of what it is. So it's in the book. We finally said, fine, you can have your little paragraph. You have to go out and find rice holes, the whole sheath and the whole thing from the rice, and you have to build a little fire and have a grate, and you put these skewers through it, and that's how you grill the tataki. <laughs> because somewhere in Japan, that's what they do. So that's a, a tradition they did, basically. Yes. Uh, use a straw. Maybe this is wine. Thing. I don't know where you buy the rice. Maybe in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. So one of the dish we're going to prepare for you today is tataki, which is a seared almost seared sashimi plate. So beautiful. It's inside a bright red and a thin white rim. And also searing skin and the sit on the uh, sauce called ponzu. It's absorb uh, ponzu really well and stay on this dry area, cooked area. So that's help uh, Instead of slip, sauce slip off from tuna, it's kind of stay sauce in on the skin. I mean, sear. It holds it. Yeah. I get an extra margarita today for this. <laughs> <laughs> this is lemon, just a thin sliced lemon. And I put on the bottom bowl and the three slices of uh, tataki. And this is uh, wasabi leaves. Everybody know wasabi? It looks like this. Just like a horseradish, a Japanese horseradish, is growing in a clean stream. So Olivia picked up for us from a Half Moon Bay, coming from a Half Moon Bay. Well, that was the one thing we got to teach her because she really knows everything, but she didn't know there was wasabi in Half Moon Bay. We're going to make a little julienne. So just a roll of the wasabi leaf. And uh, cut. So, Chef, how, how important it is, is it to have a sharp knife to cut raw fish with at home? Uh, also, sharp knife really help. Uh, usually, if you have a dull knife, you cut yourself to because you force it. If you have a sharp knife, it's easy. Because just the weight of a knife really cut everything mm. instead of forcing. So really help. And also for sashimi, you can see how shiny is surface of uh, sashimi. Mm -hmm. If you, you have a dull knife, you basically breaking uh, each cell of uh, flesh. Sashimi is uh, almost like a, you know sometimes a sharp knife. You cut yourself, you don't feel it. Yes, and, uh, I can attest to that. <laughs> yeah, the 10 minutes later, oh, still don't feel. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> oh. No cussing. <laughs> Please cut that hair. <laughs> you got to put a dollar in the bowl. Yeah. Anyway, so this is a pond sauce, also in a book. They're basically Japanese soy citrus mix. And we all, I'm, I'm assuming that almost everyone knows ponzu, but like ponzu is one of the master sauces. You put it with a little bit of olive oil, you have the greatest vinaigrette, you put it with mayonnaise and you have the greatest other sauce. It just, it goes with everything. So and I put a little wasabi on the top, wasabi leaf on the top. So this is one of the dish you're gonna taste today. The next I'm gonna prepare nigiri with the tuna. Should I steal your tuna Maybe so it could get uh, wrapped up? Yeah. Yeah. You want to move over to here? Yes. I cleaned. Probably not well enough. So, um... You need all of those? No, oh, no, you're, no, so you're gonna... <laughs> you want to tell us about the restaurant you're gonna open soon? Soon. August 1st. I'm determined. I'm very, I'm a very determined girl. 
Um, we took over a lot of, I think a lot of you might know, the old original slanted door on Valencia between 16th and 17th. So we took that over. Charles is our landlord and luckily our friend, which is probably a good bad thing, who knows. Um, it's a great space, it's very narrow and long and we're going to open a modern bistro there and its name is going to be Urchin. Um, one, because I really can't eat ever too much sea urchin. She loves sea urchin. Yeah, it's a little yeah. frightening. It's a um, funny story. After we get married in Japan, we went to uh, visit Kyoto and uh, we were just walking around the, around the hotel. We were looking for cold we, medicine. That's right. And we find a little... Um, Here's some tuna Actually, food. fish market. And we went in there. They're serving fish in, in the, inside the market too. So we sit down and there's an old, old gentleman. He's drinking sake. And then something arrived on the front of him was a, the whole tray of uni, sea urchin. He's just eating uni and drinking sake. And they eat uni and <laughs> drinking sake. And Alyssa said, can I have a one of <laughs> Yes, she finished the whole tray too. <laughs> and we just did it again, actually. We were we went with some friends. We took we we didn't take them, but we kind of took them to Japan in November, um, writers and restaurateur friends, and um, we went to the fish market there, Skiji, and you can buy stuff there. The people don't know that, but they'll sell it to you. You don't have to like be a restaurant. They will growl at you quite a bit and try and run you down with the carts. That's another issue. But I bought a whole tray of uni again and they gave they always have some hashi, some chopsticks someplace. And so we all sat like in a little corner eating our our uni that had just freshly come from Hokkaido. It was beautiful. So I'm gonna show you how to make a nigiri. Uh, first we need to grate the wasabi. Uh, Ooh, grate grate I can like do that. this. Yeah. So kind of soak it up. And Movement you, like you can get fresh wasabi now. Like, we'll see it in Japanese markets. I don't see it in Western markets, but in Asian markets, um, you'll see it. It's a little pricey, but it does keep for a little while. Yeah, I pretty much don't have to do it now. What's up? <laughs> no, I don't have to do it. <laughs> and the next one we need is a kind of water because uh, it's a rice is sticky, so this is prevent from sticking rice on uh, your finger. Uh, mixed with water and the vinegar. Just a tiny bit of vinegar. It's just and, so that you're seasoned. Uh, cutting uh, fish. Basically, you like to keep a rice ball will be about this size. So you want to kind of drape over, so a little longer than rice ball, and uh, with rice ball will be this big, so a little bit bigger than rice ball. So basically... So how are you determining which angle to cut at? Well, that's uh, another thing. And, uh, <laughs> if you cut uh, this way, you don't get enough length. So depending on uh, what you got here, you need to change the angle mm -hmm. to get uh, what, you, what you need. And uh, this way, changes width or loin. So I think you've probably seen that, like in sushi bars, all of the chef will put down a piece, especially of tuna, but other fish, and he'll kind of move it, turn it over, go back and forth, because he's looking for the way he can get the size piece he wants, and he's also watching the grain uh, that he's going to be cutting. And the, some more chef makes on a these. really long fish. Yeah. Some sushi bar makes a tiny. We don't like to go to that one. We don't like to go to that one. Yeah. No. But on the other hand, we don't like the one that's like an inch over on either side. So yeah. something in between. Because the, the, this is a rule in sushi, but I don't abide by it and have gotten yelled at by what? Morimoto. Um, I don't eat sushi in one bite. I don't care what you do, I'm not going to. I always want that second bite. But it, when they make them really long, it's hard because you, truthfully, you're supposed to put it all in your mouth at once. And the guys that make these really long ones, I don't really know how you do that. You look like a chipmunk or something. Putting that much food, you, you know, little cheeks are bulging. But you so are supposed to eat it in one bite, that is. Moist your hand with, uh, we call it tezu. Te means a hand. Zu, su is a vinegar. And uh, take uh, sushi rice. And uh, we try to make a... Uh, I, I usually get about 20 grams of rice, which is like uh, this size. 
So in this hand, you kind of make a ball already. At the same time, sushi chef does take a piece of fish and use this finger to get some wasabi onto That's a lot. fish. <laughs> That's a lot of wasabi, yes. Well, it came with its own string. Because somebody may eat that later. What's up? Somebody may eat that later. Okay. We didn't want to have the string. So like make me. a bowl and put on here. Then press with the uh, left hand thumb. And there's another way to do it. Uh, some chef just roll it to this way. And some chef take true finger, I mean true hand to put it back here. This Which way. is the way so that we a, describe it. Yeah, there's two way. Then you bend the, your finger like this to make a cup and gently push. Same time hold this thumb, hold the other side, push. And a 180 degree twist, push again. And hold both sides, gently. And again, turn, gently. Then gently nigiri. Nice. Pretty good? Yeah. <laughs> See, it's important to note he he is not and I'm obviously not sushi chefs. That that's not what we cook. And it was an important part of doing the book because you can if you do it if you really do this, you're gonna write something that's like you forget to add things that people don't know. And so this was really intricately written for like he describes something and I'm saying no that you can't say that because it doesn't make sense and so well, we try to make uh, it so that it was understandable. Another way is just to make a ball in the hand and you can put on a cutting board gently press down to something like this. Yeah. It's not as fussy as it seems. That's like the yeah. best thing you can learn from it. Then, is that uh, it's same idea put the wasabi and it just drape over yeah. And the form like this. This will be maybe much, much easier. But at the sushi bar, they don't do that. It kind of doesn't look good. <laughs> sushi chef making everything. Like <laughs> so so they, they always keep like a, some chef move of hand like this. Necess not necessary, but uh, look like a fish is still alive. <laughs> they do that like this. That's almost like a show. Hey, let's do this one. Yeah. And another way, this I want to show you, is okay. to put the fish on the... Uh, I don't, I don't, can't, yeah. I can't because I don't have... Plastic. Wet. And put the wasabi here. And the little bowl. And this has a whole, it has its own name. Uh, you can yeah. put like a shrimp. No, what's it called? The, oh, temari zushi. <laughs> it's almost like a making rice bowl. You're making beach balls. Mm -hmm. Let me get the rice off of my hand. So just to gently fold it and to twist it. So this really couldn't be and this easier. This is a really easy way to do it. And it's kind of cute. Yeah. And you can make a different color and even like you can put a little caviar under there. And you can make a head like this already. And everybody come just open up and plate it. It's this, very cute. Yeah, this we don't talk about very much in the book, but mm -hmm. it is another style. Okay, now you got a roll, baby. Yeah, and uh, I have a garnish. Oh. This is Serrano chili, marinated in uh, soy sauce, if you like spicy. And this is ser same Serrano chili, but uh, using torch to make a kind of charred flavor. Or a broiler. Mm -hmm. That's also good. In a toaster oven. And maybe this uh, need a, this oh. guy. Yeah. That'd be cute. And this is a ginger we call gari. It's a pickled ginger, young ginger. It's a palate cleanser. So between uh, you eat the different sushi. Yeah, it's not a salad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a palate cleanser. There's some, we also have a whole thing about sushi etiquette, which there is etiquette to sushi. It doesn't mean you have to live by it, but I think it's nice if everybody knows it, mm -hmm. um, which is one, that's a palate cleanser, it's not a salad. Um, another is that you dip the sushi fish side down in the soy sauce, 
not the other way. If the chef has seasoned it, you don't need to do anything. And they'll usually tell you. I don't know that we're always listening. Because sometimes I even have to say, am I supposed to dip this one? Because I didn't pay attention. Um, then usually the wasabi is in there, how much you want. Uh, but you can add how much he wants, but it's okay to add more. But you don't put it in the soy sauce. That's another. So I'm chopping using back side of a knife for hand roll. So tuna like this. And I take some mayonnaise. Japanese people like mayonnaise. They like Kewpie mayonnaise. They like so much. <laughs> Even they made their own brand called Kewpie mayonnaise. Yes. I've got the uh, tobiko in there. A little bit of green onion, sesame seeds, and most important, sriracha, <laughs> if you like spicy. At least it gets to stay in California. Mm -hmm. And mix together. Oh, you need to cut this. Mm -hmm. Like this. And they usually come in this size. Hand roll, we need a half. So let's say it's cutting. And you just before you use uh, nori, just a lightly toast on the ear burner, turn out and just go, this is burner, just go oh like this. God. Then become much, much flavorful. And you can smell nori. That it way makes too. a little crisper too. Mm -hmm. You can also buy this. I mean, it's kind of silly, but you can buy it this shape already. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I guess. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> he doesn't grocery shop. <laughs> so this is a little bigger, about this big. So put it in here. So you can uh, use kind of half the nori space you have, kind of spread and make a little dent in the middle for replace fish going. Oops. Oops isn't good. So here's fish. This time, would you cut me a daikon mm -hmm. sprouts? Yeah. Was it here? Yeah, I got it. So it goes in the middle. So you want to keep everything kind of... I put them... This is going to be a peak of corn, oh. so everything kind of in this angle. So we're going to roll... Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So this, you can put here, a little more. So start rolling from this end. This is going to meet in the middle, like this, and keep rolling. Same. Then you get the hand roll. So a lot of times when you're trying to do this, your mind plays tricks on you, and you end up with a actually a roll this way, because you 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 just kind of want to go like that instead of keeping it in a V shape. So just be conscious while you're rolling, because it's it, it just you have to pay attention is all. It's not hard certainly. Okay. So okay. these three dishes today. Thank you so much. The on time. delicious. Um, and while um, our chefs are preparing taste for you, are, are there questions for uh, Lisa and Hiro? Yeah. Are there knives that you would recommend in terms of... What knives would what, you What uh, knives would we recommend? recommend? Um, it, there, you know, there's a huge price point difference. And so there are great Japanese knives that are available here. I think if you want to buy something that's reasonable that's available, Mac is a good co company. Mac knives. Um, do you know which ones are? She's asking about knife. Knife? And so I know that I'll use Mac quite a bit. OK. It's a Japanese knife. And it, they're, I, I, they're a little use hardier. A, if Japanese knife called Masamoto. Yes, which you can't it's really uh, get here. No, you can get oh, it. Soko, Soko hardware. hardware. <laughs> so yeah, thank gosh. <laughs> so they, I don't know that they have that one. Um, but the problem with true Japanese knives is the care of them. And so you have to be ready to care for them that way. They need a different way of sharpening. Mm -hmm. As you see, I cut the lemon, start changing color. Yeah, because this is still not the stainless. 
So that part, this is stainless. Look like a Japanese knife, but made with stainless. So and who made that one? This one is Shun knife. Yeah. I didn't buy this one. They gave it to me, so <laughs> I don't know how much it was. <laughs> You're there just are a couple spoiled. of other stores with um, uh, Japanese knives, maybe not to your mm -hmm. uh, level. There's the Perfect Edge in San Mateo. That's right. And uh, Japan Woodworker is an online store uh, in uh, Alameda. So you want, there's a couple knives that you really want to have too. You want something that's strong enough to, like he was using, that's a little heavier and strong enough to cut. Depending on the fish, you want a really good slicing knife. But the, uh, uh, one, either one of these. The basic and uh, Western knife and the Japanese knife is, uh, uh, you can see it. One side is flat, one side is kind of not flat. One angle and it goes this way. Yeah. They're so sharp Western on one side. Knife is both, both coming together like yeah. this. It's easier to use it. You, you have more control. This one, you have to get used to it because if you use like a Western knife, it usually goes because the angle of a blade. So you have to be careful. You have to practice a little bit. Almost like a you straight cutting, but the you, your kind of feeling of your hand force is this way. Eventually go to straight. So that part is really different. And the sashimi, very important part is this angle makes fish doesn't stick. Yeah. Because the angle is different. So that's a good part of this knife. And that, as you see, one side is flat, one side. So left hand and a right hand knife. This one, it's always the same. Sharp this on both sides. This one you need to buy one for the left hander, one for the right hander. Any other questions? Yeah. How much was How the side of tuna? How much was the 10-pound um, price? Ten pound price. Yeah. Usually like a $16 a pound, the restaurant we pay, 16 yeah. to anywhere. And that was about 10 $45. pounds. Some sushi bars, of course, they, there's a, they buy whole fish quite often. And really good ones buy the fish and age it because there's a misnomer also about fresh fish being the best fish. Um, it, quite often, most fish needs to be aged um, a little bit before you eat it. And they'll have almost like um, tuna vaults, kind of, like the place that they keep them. They know what day they were brought in. They rotate mm -hmm. and move them around. There are a few places that do that in the city, not a lot. Um, or they have a fish purveyor do it for them. Uh, so, and then there's different pricing, depends on the quality of the fish, the fattiness in the fish. It, watch something about the fish market in Tokyo, it's just amazing watching them do this. I, I've done this and I don't know what they're doing. You know, we went to the one in, both in Japan and Hawaii and they take something and they're, they're doing this. And I'm like, yeah, that's yucky, but they know. Yeah, sometimes fish is too, too fresh and the uh, meat is, uh, how do you call it? After dye. Rigmor uh, rigor 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 mortis. Yeah. Rigor mortis. So yeah. meat is so tight. Tense. And they slice it, and they even you put it in mass, still kind of hard. So you need to wait the period to make a good session. Yeah. Also, protein breakdown to amino acid give you more umami, too. Uh, any other questions? Yes. <laughs> um, where in the South Bay to get fresh fish? Yes. And there's oh, there's a couple market, Japanese sounds, markets in San Jose. If you, you go to Japanese market, you, you already find the already tuna prepped. is made a saku like this already. Kind of a uh, couple You're, of different fish, hamachi or something. Already you can buy look like this. Yeah, already block cut. Yeah. Um, we should have done our re we should have done our research and um, look that up. But we do know that Najia has a market down there. I know that. I think mm -hmm. they have a market somewhere near Mountain View too. Um, There's a lot in San Mateo. Yeah, Somewhere so yeah. it's so just, looking. and it's not our hood. Not their hood. They live in we, Calistoga. We've got, we've got Napa and parts of San Francisco, maybe Little East Bay, but that's about it. Yeah. yeah. But because we know where, that they're available to us, even in Napa, there's a couple of places you could buy good fish for this. I'm sure you guys have a lot because there's a larger community for it. And also it's good, uh, our book has featuring a lot of different vegetable, vegetarian sushi. Yeah. It's, uh, I think that's a new, new thing to me. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, fish regulation is harder, harder every year. So, you know, oh, you, have the book? you have vegetable, make a sushi. <laughs> yeah, very nice. 
So this yeah. one here. Tuna. Red pepper. Cool, huh? Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. The other one's eggplant. Yeah, this looks is looks a little bit like a nago. And the eggplant. Yeah. Yes. So one looks like eel and one looks like tuna, but that's, you know, we're not trying to say it's not something that it isn't, but it's kind of cool how it can trick you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.